Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, guys, we're going to be looking at some stats from yesterday's victory against Red Star Belgrade. And as well, we're going to be talking about Pau Kubarsi because that cut that he received on his face. Uh, we do have to talk about it. Uh, but guys, before I get started on the video, make sure you're following all of my social media platforms. Everything is posted down below in the description. Go over there and check me out. That way you guys can stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, let's get straight into the video and let's talk about Pauco RC because as you guys can see right now, that was Pauco RC's face uh, after last night's match because there was this clash um, and um, basically Pauco RC was kicked in the face and he was caught in the side of his cheek. He had to get 10 stitches and uh, he was bleeding a lot. Um, but thankfully, Pauco RC, he is perfectly fine. And he actually talked about, uh, you know, that cut later um, after the match. He says, 10 stitches on my face. I don't care. I will give everything for this badge. And I want to applaud that commitment to Barcelona. And that's what you get from La Masia players. Players who have, you know, grown uh, in the La Masia system and who want to give everything for the badge. But as we do know, with that statement, we do know that Pau Gorsi, he is going to want to play this weekend against uh, Real Sociedad, but um, we don't know if that's going to be the case. Barcelona, they want to be more cautious. They want to see how he develops. They don't want to take any risks because Pau Gorsi, he is a key player in Barcelona's squad. Potentially, Pau Gorsi could wear a face mask uh, this weekend on Sunday, but uh, Hansi Flick, he will make the decision on whether he plays or not. And if he doesn't play, and most likely Sergio Dominguez will come into the lineup or potentially you move Kunde back into the center back position and you just play Hector 4, which I would opt for um, if I'm Hansi Flick. Uh, but talking about Hansi Flick, guys, I want to be looking at some stats from yesterday's victory against Red Star Belgrade in which we did beat them 5-2. to two. And uh, with that victory, guys, Barcelona, they have scored 55 goals in their first 16 matches in the season, which is the best goal scoring tally in Barcelona's entire history. The last time Barcelona had gotten close was in 1950 to 1951 under Ferdinand uh, Duasic, reaching 54 goals. Just think about that, guys. Barcelona have managed to surpass their best ever start to the first 16 games of the season in regards to goal scoring reaching 55 goals that's absolutely insane we're averaging three to four goals a game and when you look at barcelona this season barcelona have scored the most goals in the champions league 15 in four matches we scored the most goals in la liga 40 in 12 matches and we've scored the, the most goals in the top five leagues barcelona with 40 and that is something that you have to applaud guys round of applause for barcelona and uh when you see who is making that possible we have to talk about two key figures in rafinha and lewandowski of course lamina mo gets praise but i want to give special shout out to these two guys um uh, because robert lewandowski and rafinha right now they are joint top goal scorers in this season's champions league lewandowski has five goals rafinha has five goals Djokovic has five goals and kane has five goals but the exception to Gyokudes and to Kane, Lewandowski and Rafinha, they haven't they haven't been given any penalties. Gyokudes has scored five goals, but two of them have been from penalties, and Kane has scored five goals, but three of them have been from penalties. Barcelona right now, they're scoring goals for fun, and uh, it's all through open play. And talking about Lewandowski very, very briefly, guys, uh, Lewandowski is only one goal away from reaching 100 goals in the Champions League. He could have achieved that in last night's match against Red Star, but um, it wasn't the case, and it's most likely that he's going to reach that elusive 100-goal mark in the Champions League. But uh, talking about Rafinha, guys, uh, looking at his season so far, he's played 16 matches, which is roughly 1,300 minutes, and uh, he scored 12 goals, 8 assists. He's won 2 penalties, created 53 chances, 17 big chances, and uh, he has 49 ball recoveries. And uh, Rafinha right now is arguably one of the best players in the world. And he's going to be making a, um, a basically a challenge for that Ballon d'Or. And when we look at Rafinha in the Champions League in 2024, 
Against Napoli, uh, he only got an assist in those two games. And against PSG, though, he scored three goals uh, over the two legs. Against Monaco this season, he didn't score. Against Young Boys, he got a goal and an assist. Against Bayern Munich, we obviously know that he got a hat trick. And, he, and last night against Red Star Belgrade, he picked up a goal and assist. And with that, his eight goals in the year of 2024 so far is the highest by a Barcelona player in the Champions League in a calendar year since Lionel Messi in 2019. Rafinha, a man for the big matches and the big games. And uh, Rafinha, man, you know, what a turnaround he has had so far. And, you know, we credit that uh, to his work work ethic. We credit Hansi Flick as well for finding him and is able to maximize uh, his strengths and minimize his weaknesses. But uh, it's absolutely amazing how Rafinha has been able to turn it around in Barcelona. And uh, very briefly, going back to Robert Lewandowski, guys. Uh, Robert Lewandowski right now, when we look at his goal-scoring streak, the only games in which he hasn't gotten a goal was against Rajo Vallecano, against Monaco, against Osasuna, and against Espanyol. And that is over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 matches. He, he has only managed uh, not to score in four of those games. And against, again, the games against Rajo, he did have a goal disallowed. But man, Robert Lewandowski right now, he's putting up numbers similar to that of his prime season and uh, of that season in which he was buying for the Ballon d'Or. But uh, going away from some positive news, guys, I want to show you this graphic right here. Um, and, let, and let me share the screen right here uh, so you guys can see it. But uh, these are Ansu Fati's minutes so far since he has returned from in injury. As you can see, he has only played against Monaco, which was two minutes. Basically, that's that's nothing. He did play against Young Boys. He played against Alaves, which was 23 minutes. He played against Sevilla, 76 minutes. Uh, against Bayern, only five. And against Espanyol, only five. And uh, when you look at the 11 matches in which he has played, he has only played 137 minutes. Now, we look at how great Barcelona's front line is performing, how great Rafinha, Lewandowski, Dani Omo, and Lamino Mal are performing. But uh, one player who isn't, you know, having the same success is Ansu Fati. And this is worrying, guys, because at the start of the season, we were seeing, oh, you know, Ansu Fati, he's just, you know, coming back in, into, into the swing of things. You know, we're, we're waiting for him to get fit. But uh, we're at the point where Ansu Fati right now, he is at 100% physically. Ansu Fati, Ansu Fati right now is in a place where he is able to, to play 90 minutes and start. We saw him against Sevilla a couple games ago, and now it's only a matter of his ability and his performances. Ansu Fati right now, he is just not at the level required for Barcelona to be a starter. And this is very worrying, guys, because if Ansu Fati isn't able to recover his best form, then this is going to be his last season. We've talked about this you know, in the preseason. We talked about this when, um, when Ansu Fati was set to stay. Is Ansu Fati going to return to his best level? Because if he is not, then Barcelona, they are not going to need him any longer. And this breaks my heart because Ansu Fati, uh, he, when he first emerged, we were saying that he was going to be the next superstar, the replacement of Lionel Messi. And um, that just hasn't been the case. But do you guys give up on Ansu Fati? Or do you guys still place some trust in him and uh, still view it possible for him to turn the situation around and emerge as a you know a vital part or a crucial player in Barcelona's system. Right now, he's only a super sub, and even then, you know he isn't one of the first options off the bench. But uh, guys, that was it for the Barcelona news of the day. Later tonight, we are going to be making a video uh, continuing to talk about more Barcelona's game against Red Star Belgrade, and as well as some other Barcelona topics, so make sure to tune in for that. But guys, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace out, guys. Alegría, el estilo para lo que más quiero en la vida.